So, hello everyone, welcome to Flutter Explained again, and uh, my name is Max, as you know, but I have today a very special guest, um, it's Puff from, uh, or Frank, is it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was enjoying his talk here at the FlutterCon 23, and uh, he has some very interesting insights for us, and I wanted to share it with you. So, thank you very much to take your time um, and being here. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure, I would love that, Max. Hi, I'm Frank, or Puff. And I'm an engineer on the Firebase team. And Firebase is a set of backend services that make it easier for you to build Flutter apps because you can access our backend services directly from within your Flutter code. Yeah. And yeah, we just did a workshop on one of the Flutter or one of the Firebase products uh, that you can use from Flutter. But yeah, in general, I'm I'm at a lot of events where I talk about like mm -hmm. Firebase and, and and updates that we release. Okay. So I saw you are very active on Stack Overflow, and you already told me about that. So uh, would you like to share with your uh, with our viewers what bring you in the first place to to answer so many questions about Firebase on Stack Overflow? It's a really good one. I have a very special relationship with Stack Overflow. So um, I've been a 20-year software developer before I became a developer relations person. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I started going to Stack Overflow on my weekends when I had a job where it wasn't that hard to do, right? So I was just looking for something to entertain myself, and I started answering some questions on Stack Overflow about technology I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Then I learned about Firebase, and I started answering some questions about like how to do NoSQL data modeling. Mm -hmm. Then at some point, like somebody commented with a nice answer, Frank, and I was like, thank you, who are you? <laughs> and it turns out one of the founders of Firebase. Oh, so nice. I was like, oh, okay. And then a few months later, they reached out and they said, hey, we like what you're doing, do you want to come work for us to do the same thing? So I was hired because I was helping developers on Stack Overflow, which is one of the reasons I still actually so much enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. So five minutes before we started the talk earlier, I was still looking for like helping somebody on Stack Overflow with a problem they were having. Mm -hmm. Just one of the highlights of my day. So. Fantastic. I can imagine that is also very fulfilling at the end. So great, great. Really, thank you so much for the work on the community there. So um, yeah, you told me that you have an event planned in the next couple of months. Is that correct? Oh, Majid is going to be so happy that you asked this. Yes, we do indeed. <laughs> no, we do. So later in the year, I love coming to Flutter conference. I love going to conferences in general, but the Flutter conferences have a special place in my heart always because the Flutter community is so special. <laughs> I also love the Firebase community. So what we're going to do is, together with the folks at Invertes, we are organizing the Flutter Firebase Festival, uh -huh. uh, which is a mouthful. So what we're also saying, we're doing something in Prague. Uh -huh. We're doing that late September, September 26 and 27, uh, an event, and you should all go to f3.events. Yes, that's the TLD these days, f3.events, and sign up today. It's going to be an amazing event. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to bring Googlers over to talk about all the latest releases for, about Firebase that affect Flutter and the other way around. And we're also going to have a community track, workshops. We're going to play games. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> That's a quite, uh, yeah, can't wait to hear more about it. You will find a link down in the video description below, as always, you know. Um, Cool, so um, you are a Google developer, DevRel is it called, right? So what are you doing exactly? Yeah. We were chatting about that earlier. <laughs> so my job title is that I'm a developer relations engineer, but I was like, that means nothing to people, so I say I'm a Firebase engineer. Mm -hmm. But my job indeed is to um, partially help developers with the products we built, mm -hmm. but I do that in part so that I can also see where people have problems yeah. and then take that feedback back to the team mm -hmm. and that's one of the things we just did right we did a workshop to help people build a firebase extension it's a new product we launched or the building them yourselves and i brought along actually one of the engineering managers mm -hmm. right to have them in the room as people were trying to follow along to see where they are struggling right because yeah. I can take the feedback from the people and bring it back to the, the engineering leads, mm -hmm. but it's much more effective, I find, if I put them in the same room, mm -hmm. right? Because when I bring it back, they say, oh, you just had the wrong developer in the room. Mm -hmm. And when they're in the room, I'm like, sure, go tell them that they're the wrong developer, right? Nobody wants that, like, yeah. right? And so so that that's the trick I often do is bringing, bringing with me the engineering leads mm -hmm. so that I don't have to tell them what is broken. Mm -hmm. Also, they have a much better eye for it themselves than I have, right? They pay way better attention. And Iman was taking notes earlier. He, he was the engineering lead. Yeah. He was taking notes, right, on like where people were asking questions, where they were struggling, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. So it's like connecting people and bringing the right people in the right room, right? It sounds very interesting, like uh, I can imagine. Um, so now my viewership is very young usually, so I can tell that between 18 and I don't know, maybe 40. And uh, what can you give for tips for young developers, uh, especially Flutter developers? Maybe they want to start with Firebase or even, I don't know, want to get the DevRel at the end. So what tips could you give them? 
it's so interesting, right? Like I've been blessed that I've always had jobs that I love, mm -hmm. uh, but I love my current job. I seriously have the best job in the world, so don't come for it. It's mine, <laughs> mine, mine. But no, it's like I, I think it's it's development. Developing software is fun, right? Because you can make the machine do something that you told it to do, right? And it always does what you told it, not what you wanted it to, right? That's yep. the frustration of being a developer. <laughs> so I often do uh, workshops. Uh, for people that are not from a traditional developer background mm -hmm. and then teaching them how to develop. And honestly, I always do what we did earlier today. I build a chat app. Mm -hmm. And it's like the world has enough chat apps. But what I find about a chat app, for example, is that we all know how a chat app works, right? You type a message, it gets added to the end, to mm -hmm. the end, to the end. It's a very simple data model. So what I see is that people that don't consider themselves developers, right? If we get them in the right, right mindset and things are working, and with Flutter, that is like often the case, right? I see them starting to, to Think of other things, right? So we're building a chat app, but they're actually building a grocery list mm -hmm. app, right? Or a to-do app. Or I can see, right, you can see people where like they're imagining a multiplayer game. Okay. Right? Because the data model is so simple that they are thinking along, which is one of the reasons I still build chat apps. If you want to get started with this yourself, find your local community. There's, there's seriously no better way, especially the Flutter communities. I met so many leads here yeah. right, that are telling me. And honestly, all I want to do is go to all of these communities mm -hmm. because they are so passionate. I met with Renuka, uh, a fellow DevRel at, at another company, and uh, she was telling me that during COVID she got started. And they started a whole community. And um, she's based in London, but she was also meeting with people in rural India mm -hmm. where they were sitting three at a laptop right, and building an app. And then I see the app that they're building, and it's like, I have no idea how you did that if you, right? I've been doing this for, for, for like dozens of years. And they have just started and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And I find it so inspiring. So find that community because they will help you, right? We, I've seen so many of them here. It's the Google Developer Groups, the Flutteristas, uh, the Women Plus in Firebase. There's all these groups that are just looking to help you get started as a developer. They're really amazing. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so that sounds like a very good uh, roadmap at the end to start with. Yeah. I would give the same advice, so good for, <laughs> good for you, I take that. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, are you writing code still? I am, but I must admit that the code I write is now no longer of that size, but normally of that size, mm -hmm. right? I actually just earlier, I was running this workshop together with like another friend, and I noticed he writes production code. Mm -hmm. So he had like all the code in various files, right? That was better for maintenance and for structure. And I told him, it's like, yeah, we're gonna put everything in one file. And you're gonna type it live top to bottom, mm -hmm. right? You're not gonna switch files ever. You're not gonna scroll. It's like, you could see him like, but that's bad code. It's like, <laughs> it's not, it's not bad code, but it is less maintainable code. Mm -hmm. But what we're always looking for, right, is the happy path. Yeah. And right, I'm always explaining a single thing to you, mm -hmm. right, or three things, but like, right, so you're always looking for, can I bring it back to 10 to 12 lines of code, mm -hmm. right, nothing more. And that's the, the thing I find is like, I'm constantly looking for, can I do less mm -hmm. work with less code? Mm -hmm. Because that's the easiest to explain. But I do still write code. I have noticed, I've, like, I shipped so much code in my life. I find it harder these days to sit down and read an entire structure. It's just something where it's like, huh, would I, would I want to go back to that? Because I do miss like actually defining entire architectures. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, when I define architectures, it's because I sit with the product team and help them, right? What should the architect for this new product be? Okay. And, and that's the part I, I miss then implementing. Okay. But it's so fulfilling to help others implement it. That's, it's, it's a good trade-off, I think. I can imagine. I talked yesterday with Eric uh, Seidel, um, you probably know him, and he, uh, and I asked him because uh, I saw on his GitHub page that he has a passionate program, it's like Starship uh, Traders, I think it's the name, and do you have some um, passion project that you are working if you are not uh, actively working on Firebase? I must admit, I've been pretty good at always pulling whatever I want into my job. Okay. Uh, but it is a thing, I often work on demo apps that I want to do at uh, events. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, have many failed projects, right? I just revived a, a an app that I started on years ago that was essentially a, right? I, often when I'm at a, an, a talk, I tell people, it's like, who here has used Firebase, right? And some communities, it's actually very, like, like it's hard for people to raise their hand. They mm -hmm. find that tricky. So I wanted a virtual show of hands mm -hmm. app. And I was working on that, and I was just reviving that. And of course, I never got anywhere. Mm -hmm. One of my actual really, so this is really very work-related. One of the things I find that brings me joy that has nothing to do with technology is colors. Okay. I'm a color geek. No oh. idea why, but like the Pantone color of the year is like a happy day for me. 
<laughs> and so I started doing a colorista app, I called it, in Flutter at some point, and it never got anywhere, but it was one of the places where I saw it's like, I wasn't using Firebase, yeah. I had no interest in using Firebase, I just was happy to get animations with colors and hero, hero animations mm -hmm. and things like that. That's one of the things I'm like very passionate about, I noticed, but I don't think I'll ever get like that into my work or mm -hmm. something, I also don't need to. So. That's fantastic. Uh, so you also distinguish between colors? Like I know that some people really know the names of the colors, like this is red, this is Bordeaux, this is, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it, no, that's one. It's one of the accounts I follow. Two, I follow two accounts on Twitter. Uh, one of them became an inactive. I realize now, but right, one of them does color of the day, mm -hmm. uh, which just is random hex hex code, right? Okay. That they generate, and then a little block of that. And there's days that I'm like, why did you do that one? And there's days that like I'm actually happy with the color. Okay. But then there's another account that if you tweet a color, it gives you the name for that color. That is great. Exactly, that combination is magical, right? <laughs> and they're like extensions, right? Like one and the other, it's like, mm -hmm. oh, together they're one plus one is three. And they have all the names. I started looking at how they do that. It turns out it's just one big table, right? There's a huge lot, like, like map of like, anything in this range is called uh, considered uh, liver, mm -hmm. right? Not my favorite color, right? Or this is red, this is hot pink, this is fusia. Like, yeah. What's the difference between hot pink and fusia? Well, about 5%. <laughs> right, like, like it's like it's so it's such a joke. Yeah, you know? cool. So um, um, your T-shirt is yellow. Great. So I just want to go once the time back. I did a make a detour here. So sorry for that. But <laughs> totally what is your favorite product in Firebase? Ooh, that is tricky. I'm gonna upset so many people now. <laughs> like, no, I really like a lot of products. I, I really do. I do have an affinity for our backend services. Yes. That's where I started. Mm -hmm. And in a large part, right, I started with Firebase very early. So before I joined the team, right, I was using Firebase. So I've been fi using Firebase for over 11 years now. Okay. And back when I started using it, it was only one product, right? Mm -hmm. It was called a Firebase because it was our database. It's what we now call the Firebase real-time database. Mm -hmm. And I think we got a question about it earlier about somebody we were using Firebase. Firestore, mm -hmm. but a Firestore is a, a document database with a stronger querying model, right? Some st or stronger querying API, I say. But th they wanted to use real-time database, and it just makes me happy because I find it's a very simple product. Mm -hmm. It's a product where I love the API because the API is very minimal. So honestly, it's if I don't need st a stronger query API, if I mm -hmm. don't need a data model that is easier to explain. I on, uh, often find myself going back to the real-time database uh, and using that. Uh, it's, it's still a great product. Um, it was revolutionary at the time because back when we created that, mm -hmm. uh, real-time data synchronization between apps was not a thing, mm -hmm. right? It was very uncommon. The pull to refresh, we always joked, mm -hmm. right, that Twitter introduced, which was great, right? And we always were like, yeah, yeah, we want to get rid of that mm -hmm. because you shouldn't have to pull to refresh. The re data should be there. Mm -hmm. And that's what we made one of the large parts of right, Firebase going forward. So Cloud Firestore, right, our other database has that built in. Yeah. And many of our other products actually, right, do these types of real-time updates. Just curious from my perspective, is it possible to configure Firebase with Terraform? Yeah, great question. Actually, yeah, we uh, launched that. Honestly, until earlier this year, I knew very little about Terraform. I still am not an expert, but uh, no, just at I/O we announced it. We were building it already. That you can configure almost all services from Firebase with Terraform now, which is actually one of the things that gets me excited mm -hmm. because we, we at Firebase we do every quarter we do a Hack Week project, and there were some very interesting. Terraform hacks being done also, where they were configuring all kinds of Firebase services with Terraform. No, and it, it's amazing to see where, it's the thing I never need myself, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can click through the thing. But I never need it except, well, I actually do want to repeat this in a demo later, mm -hmm. right? And I need to get my demo in the right state. Terraform is brilliant for that. No, very, very happy with that, yeah. yeah. Okay, great, fantastic. All right, so that was all the major and important questions. And the last one that I would like to ask is, um, what was your, did you have a chance to participate in the talks here at FlutterCon? To attend them? Yeah. Yes, I did, yeah, for sure. So which one was your favorite so far? I must admit, I did, it's my big problem at conferences. I meet so many people on yeah. my way to a talk that I miss most talks. <laughs> but I did attend uh, two of the three keynotes. Oh yeah. Uh, and I must say, I liked both of them, but so, so the, the Google Flutter keynote by Todd Volkert, mm -hmm. I sort of knew what he was going to say, yeah. right? Because I'm in there. Yeah. So I really enjoyed Eric Seidel's keynote, mm -hmm. where he, right, he has left the nest, as he said, right? He's no longer at Google, but still very active in Flutter, mm -hmm. right? And it was very cool to see both his vision for the next 10 year of Flutter, yeah. and then, as he says, says it, right, like making small things quickly, mm -hmm. right? And he does code push, right? So um, it's like hot reload on, for your end users. 
I, by the way, really wish he would use that name for it, <laughs> right? But, uh, but, and it's so magical to see mm -hmm. that, right? Because people were in that talk and uh, I had asked, there's a conference app here at Fluttercom mm -hmm. and I wanted a feature change and that was done overnight. Like, by the way, kudos to, to Mice, the developer who did that. But now somebody was asking, huh, not, not deployed with, hot, uh, or with code push. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I love that, right? Because Eric did such a great, great job at explaining mm -hmm. why you want that, that now developers are like, yes, of course, that's how you do it. Yeah. That was really cool to see. So I, yeah. uh, Eric Sadel did a great job there. Yeah. Yeah. I also said, uh, I talked yesterday with Eric and I said that uh, finally Flutter is getting like feature parity with React Native and other stuff. Yeah, you sure. know, it's like going in the right direction. So yeah. very happy with that. No, yeah. All right, so thank you very much for being with me. It was a joy to talk with you. And I really hope we have the chat uh, the next time when we are at the meetings at work. That sounds great. Let's start planning to be more events together in that case. Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks all for watching. All right, thank you, bye.